Okay, let's try again. Hopefully the connection will work this time. So, hi everybody. Let's see, I'm hoping this will work. I'm doing a layered layout today with a minimum amount of supplies. So, if you can see and hear me, please say something. Yeah, at least head, oh, thumbs up, so perfect. <laughs> I started about five minutes ago, but the live ended because of the bad connection. So I'm hoping that everything will work out fine this time. So thank you so much for joining. We're doing uh, mixed media inspired, only using a couple of mediums today because the topic is doing a layered layout with a tight budget. I thought that would be a good kind of theme for the beginning of the year. Okay, hi Sweta, hi Kim, hi Mari. Thank you for joining. So this layout is done using only two 12 by 12 papers. Naturally, if you are scrapbooking on a smaller scale, you need even less paper maybe. And a stamp, some watercolors, and some sewing supplies. Video is nice and clear, layout looks beautiful. Thank you, Janina. Hi, Aya. Bye, hey. <laughs> so, this one is the topic today. About one minute, and then I'll actually start. And I do hope that the camera will stay focused to the layout and not go back and forth as I talk with my hands. So, I'm trying to keep them put. Hi, Nathmal. Oh, Nathalie. Lovely to see you. Hi. So, have you been joining, uh, enjoying the sneak peeks of the new collections? I hope you have. Once again, they are gorgeous, the collections. So, stay tuned. There's going to be a bit more sneak peeks and then the full reveals. So I'm guessing, no, a bit more time and then we'll start. Because normally I would do, for example, this in that the background paper would continue all the way here and there would be a strip on top. But this is actually cut so that I can use the part of this paper as well. Thank you, Natalie. Hi, Diane. Thank you so much for joining today. So if you have any questions, I'll try to keep an eye on the comments section here. So if you have any questions, hi, Sh uh, Claudia, Sharon will be here to answer the questions as well. But like always, I'll go through the comments after the show. So if there's anything, hi, Inka, if there's anything that she couldn't answer or I want to clear something or what, whatever. So she'll be here to answer right away and I'll go through when I'm done. But let's start. There is a bit of a dull part <laughs> during this live when you can go and make yourself a cup of tea or something because this one needs a bit of, as you can guess probably, fussy cutting. I did some pre like already, but I wanted to show you the whole sheet and I already had two. One to make the sample layout and one to use here. So that's why I'm going to be fussy cutting a little during the show. But the first tip. Hi Sharon. Hi Jen. Thank you for joining. So the first tip. Hi Sato Susanna. So, yes, sorry, <laughs> onwards and upwards. The first tip is to really look at the paper. Prima has lovely papers that have florals or like detailed design on the other side and something a bit more, um, how to say, modern or just solid color 
or something that's not as detailed as the other side. So these kinds of papers, if you are on a budget, are perfect because you kind of get two patterns for one. And if you are frugal, you can cut those up and use the florals and then have a modern pattern or a stripe pattern that goes with anything in, on the other side. And this is the other paper I'm using, the same thing here. This side has foil accents and florals and a lot of things going on. But the other side is kind of vintage styled. Perfect background, at least for me. Uh, these are from older collections. This is from the Lavender and this one is from Amelia Rose. But I picked these two up from the more recent ones that have the same idea. But there's these little cards on the other side of the Golden Coast paper, which you could use individually. And then the other side has a lovely watercolor flowers again, which you can use to cut. And this is one of my favorites. Rossi Bell collection with the lush flowers. You can really layer. And then the other side is perfect for background. Nothing too much happening there, a little bit of texture. So it's kind of already in there. You don't have to use that many mediums. But enough about the talking, let's get creating. As you can see from the sample, the top of the layout is from this paper and the bottom is from this side and using it this way. You can choose a horizontal line, but I chose because my layout is a bit horizontal to counteract that with a vertical pattern on the paper. So it would be totally different looking if it would be like this. So, and normally I trim off the manufacturer strips, but this time it's really handy to have it. If you are on a budget and don't have a paper cutter, you can use scissors, that's fine. I can cut straight if even if my life temp depended on it, as I'm still accustomed to paper cutter, so I'm using that. this way. So I'm cutting five inches of this paper, which is going to be the top, uh, bottom part of the layout. I'm then saving this one for the flowers. And then to get something from this paper, I'm trimming off five inches from the top. Let me move that aside. So the same amount I trimmed from the other page. And now, again, something to use for layering and later on. Then I add double-sided tape to the manufacturer strip. And adhere the piece here. Whoopsie daisy. And I have a perfect 12 by 12 paper that way. The manufacturer strip works as the place where to adhere. And as I trimmed off 5 inches and added 5 inches, it's the perfect size. And you can really use kind of everything on the paper. So now I have my 12 by 12 ready and I have spared some of the paper for layering later. Next thing is to add some kind of medium. For this project I chose the watercolor confetti set because there's a lot of color to choose from. And if you're trying to be on a budget, 
it might be a bit more expensive because there's so much color, but there comes also the brush. So you're kind of good to go with this set. One way you can use watercolors if you are, let's say, afraid to add something straight on to the layout is to use a bit of plastic. This is actually from the stamp, the one of the protective pieces. Oops, that was actually a blue one, not the purple one I was going for, but never mind. Let's use this one anyway. To add it on top of a plastic and then you can kind of stamp it so you get that watercolor effect without actually having to add a brush to your layout if if you feel that that's too scary in a way to actually add this way it's kind of mm, haphazardous it's a surprise what you get and if you look at the colors I'm choosing they echo the colors of the patterns of the page so I'm going for pink and also the purple that are already present in the layout in the form of the flowers. So this way you can just add color. Naturally the other way to use watercolors is one I love the most and I can't do a, sing a single project without is splashes. It's also a handy way if you use them really like tightly together and put a lot of them it looks like confetti or something lovely scattered on top what you maybe need to be a bit careful of though is the color red because that's unfortunately sometimes starts to look like it's a splatter movie Combining red with other paints usually works, but if if you are hesitant, then steer away from the right blood red at first. Pink is okay, because at least that doesn't remind immediately about blood. But if you use dark red, for example, it's... Oh, then again, if you're doing a Halloween layout. What a fabulous way to get that haunted feeling. And then naturally with watercolors you can just paint. Somebody sometimes asked me on a workshop that how I make the watercolor look like how I make it look. Because I'm no watercolor artist by far. But I really needed to then analyze how I actually use watercolor and what I realized is that I don't hold brush for example like this like in a uh, 90 degrees angle to the page but it's more like lying flat and I wiggle the brush between my fingers so it's kind of having its own life I'm not painting as it is but more like just moving the color around in a way Then let me quickly dry this because no, let's use this mode so maybe you can hear something. So as you probably know there's watercolor techniques that were wet on wet or then dry on wet or there's different ways to use watercolors. like you could see here these are kind of well not wet techniques but they are uh, using some some water with the with the colors but now that I'm really trying to achieve 
this kind of look. So it's almost like ink, but it's done with watercolors. So if you are on a budget, I always try to emphasize that put your money to the mediums and such mediums that are really versatile and well when you get a new medium try it out in different ways and try to get everything out of that one medium because normally you can somehow find replacement to paper or to some embellishments but if you are a mixed media influenced scrapbooker and you don't have the mediums it's well it's kind of hard so when I'm using watercolors to stamp it's not like ink but it creates an ink like effect when I'm using really a well, little of water I'm kind of painting the mm, color on top of the stamp and then just stamping it. If you think the black is too harsh, it makes too big of a contrast, naturally you could use the pink color as well. Or if you're going for a vintage look, the brown, brown tones in the palette, or mix colors on top of the stamp. <coughs> So it's not just black, but as I want it kind of imitate because I usually use black ink for stamping. It kind of creates that contrast with everything else I have going on. So that's why I chose black. And it's not as sharp as let me try to get here as ink. But you can still see the teeny tiny patterns. And here, this has been still wet, so it kind of creates that watercolor effect. But on dry areas, or on top of here, where it's more dry, it's more crispier. And what's perfect about Prima Marketing watercolors is that they have such a huge amount of pigment so they will go for <laughs> for years I have had the tropicals set which is my favorite now for maybe three years and I still use it so it's a, getting a lot for for your money so now we have a mixed media influenced hi net done background done with watercolors even though it seems that there's different mediums to add another thing there, I use just a regular pencil, because as you can see here, it's kind of echoing then the thread that I'm using then to embellish my layout later. But these lines that kind of gather the attention to the photo, and they are done using a simple pencil. There's quite a few ways you can use a pencil. In a layout as well. Make it a, bit, a little bit duller so I don't tear the paper as it's a bit wet. And what I do, I don't draw the circle, but it's more like now I'm watching just out of the window, for example, and doing these random lines. Because if you really draw, it shows on the line and it's a bit kind of hesitant in that way so if you just let let go let loose then you have that kind of flowing line that also the thread has if it seems too difficult to or something you don't want to try then by all means take for example a plate and trace around it and then you can again gather the attention to the photo that's there Okay, now we have the background done. Let's move the watercolors away. And then we start layering. I mainly used, as the paper layers, the 
purple paper I had because I wanted to use as many of the flowers I could possibly get in the layering and to kind of mix, mix and match this paper, the purple paper, to the pink flowers I also cut a couple of, of purple flowers to the layering. So creating the layers behind the photo is easy. Again, if you don't have a paper cutter, you can use just scissors. I'm not measuring anything when I'm cutting. Hmm, let's use that one for the layering. So let's stick these papers, for example, to the background of the photo. Maybe that strip still, as it has the lovely foiling there. So I don't measure anything, I'm just taking the papers. Um, I'm loving there's so much conversation going on and I have no idea what you're talking about. I'm really enjoying seeing so much interaction. But yeah, I'm just layering the papers on my hand, in my hand, well, holding the papers and layering them behind the photo. That one there. And could I use maybe that one a bit? Oops, let's do this one first. The longer one and then the shorter one. And now I'm trying to move everything. Well, that comes off. So it may have. I'm trying to keep everything placed and then using my trusty stapler to adhere the layers more or less then checking how much this should be it was about yay yay much away if you are not on a such a tight budget or you have those scraps we all have <laughs> lying around then you could take a bigger piece just something on the size of your photo or a bit smaller to use kind of the backing here because then the teeny tiny pieces don't go moving about but they are kind of adhered to that bigger piece but it's okay using it like it is then foam dots are great but so it's plain cardboard especially if you are doing a project that's going to be handled then a sturdier piece of just a cardboard box might do the trick even better than foam dots because then you could should use a whole lot of them. Yeah, like Sharon said, it's nice to save money, but even nicer to not throw so much stuff in the trash. Yeah, definitely. Like naturally you can, even if you're not on a budget, you can use these tricks. And for example, if you have teeny tiny scraps of paper, with flower patterns, cut those flowers loose and then you can use them for layering because they also make a perfect kind of background for the lovely prima, sorry, prima flowers. So using those as the background and then you can layer the actual dimensional flowers on top. That's a great way kind of to add that layering. The papers I'm using are from older collections in this layout. Uh, this 
rosy pattern one is from Emily Rose and this one with the purple flowers is from Lavender collection. But the same tricks apply to kind of any collection. Just look for the papers that have lovely prints on kind of both sides, which Prima usually has. There's a lot to choose from. So there's the kind of more goes to every layout kind of pattern in the other side and then the floral or more detailed one on the other. So as you could see, I already adhered the photo to the paper layers and the paper layers plus the photo, the whole cluster to my layout using just regular adhesive. So this way when I'm kind of building, let me show you this, I'm building the flowers. I don't use any flowers underneath the layers because there doesn't need to be anything there. So now comes the a bit duller part. All the little elements are cut from the leftover paper which I used. So for example there's the banner which I then used to make my title. A perfect way to use that. And it doesn't matter even if the flower is like here partly being cut out because then you can layer it like this or on this side and it doesn't matter that there's a part of it missing and I even cut out the little butterflies because they make perfect little decorations between the layers so let me cut a few of these a tip if you do fussy cutting is that your scissors are staying put and the paper is going round and round. I hope you can see what I'm doing. And well, if you want to be really, really delicate and cut everything, that's fine. But I'm like using a faster speed on this one. So for example, the leaves, they are more like just cut randomly in a way. Because your brain is going to make that <clears throat> a whole whole thing. It's going to be looking like a leaf even though it doesn't have all the little nooks and creeks cut out. Uh, I was thinking about when I'm doing this and it's a bit boring for you to talk about other kind of tips or ways you can be on a budget. For example, this lovely vintage paper. If you have, for example, old book pages or old postcards or something you found from a yard sale or something, you can naturally kind of include those in because mixing and matching that kind of makes the project unique so if you have something of your own stash and then add the lovely prima on top it makes it a whole whole lot interesting and of kind of personal way sorry <clears throat> Favorite fussy cutting scissors, ask Stacy. These are mine. <laughs> I'm not a fussy cutter as such. <coughs> Sorry. But I like to use kind of long bladed scissors. So I don't have to go. Sorry opening the scissors all that much but <coughs> but I know some people like to use a craft knife for this I can't use it it comes terrible mess when I'm doing that
something you can also use if you're on a budget. Sewing supplies, like I use on this layout as well. Buttons, thread, they make perfect addition to layouts or other projects. Nuts and bolts, other metal embellishments, again perfect. Office supplies, again something you can add to add a little bit of your own unique style to your layout. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Gosh, I've been having this cold for more than a month. It doesn't go away. Yeah. Do you have any other ideas what you can use? If you are on a budget, kind of mixing in with the both Prima supplies or other supplies. There's also an um, online workshop that's about being savvy with supplies. It's from, the <coughs> sorry again, Mixed Up Creative Academy has that workshop. It started in January and it's also all about getting more out of your supplies. Like I said, when you get a new medium or new supply, what I kind of urge you to do is to test what you can do with it. Because even though watercolor is not for stamping as such, you can stamp with it, you can color paste with it. It's color pigment anyway, so find another way to use it. And usually that that kind of makes you love the medium even more, because you can create another way to use it. Yeah, I'll need a cup of tea after this. I'm just trying to make the layout ready. It usually starts when I talk much. For example, when I'm working then. In the middle of everything, I start to lose my voice and be coughing all the time. But, well, like Mala said, tea. There's another way to be on a budget. Use tea as a colorant. Because that's wonderful. It also has a lovely tone. If you have water reactive inks, like Prima has those, um, well, the one on the color philosophy white inks, not the permanent ones, then you can use the, those to make the background and they are for stamping. Thank you for the get well wishes. I'm sorry about <clears throat> me trying to trying to make the best out of it. But yeah, I'm hoping I'm having enough now for the layers, so oh, let's see. For the layering, I'm kind of going for a Whoops, sorry. Come on, focus here. Yep. Going for a horizontal composition and trying to keep the, even though it's all about the photo in the layout, I'm kind of trying to bind it into the background by layering something underneath and something over t top so there's going to be the title on top for example let's add that one and paper clip maybe on the top corner this time paper clip Mm 
what about two? Yep, let's use two. And then let's add, for example, these flowers in. You could use double-sided tape or or just glue, whatever is easier for you. Oops, actually I was trying to put it the wrong way around. I like the roast that it's not complete showing. Whoops. <clears throat> Sorry. Then I have the little ones also. But in this moment, I'm starting to add the thread. It's kind of being locked underneath the paper layers. So if you try to adhere something as delicate as a sewing thread, it usually ends up looking like you adhered sewing thread. But if you want it to have this kind of fluffy feeling, the flowiness, <clears throat> so then just adhere it underneath something so it will stay put it doesn't come off your layout but at the same time it has that lovely flowing feeling still left if black is too harsh for your layout i'm bringing it here to add contrast to the page but if it's too hard and you want to go on a more pastel looking white, pink, whatever, whatever you have at hand is perfect. And then keeping it on a budget, these are actually from my grandmother or even maybe further than that. While the Prima Crystals are lovely and I love to use them, on this page I thought to use something different and head it for my sewing supplies. And just, no, that's too big, let's use that one. Everything is falling, but we don't mind about that too much now, do we? Then let's make these a little bit fuller by using the single cutout. I'm thinking maybe not on top, or yeah, maybe, maybe like that. Now it seems that my hand is flowering, because those are my, my hand. I'm attending a concert by my favorite band there, so that's why the heart. One more there. And as I don't want to dull you more with the cutting of the purple flower, but to kind of combine these purple tones to the flowers, I would also add one of the purple ones I saved. This one in the mix, or even cut it as half, like use these and these on the opposite side. So making it kind of a complete whole layout that way. So a couple of more things to add. Oh, there it is a little butterfly and then this one is kind of okay but this layout lacked something here so I took the just regular painters tape and use it you could add this as the bottom layer as well but especially if you use battened washi tape, adding it, it 
in the last stage saves you a whole lot of tape as you only need to kind of mimic that it would be running the whole way through and if you have loose ends on the thread this is also a perfect way to add a little something to the layers and kind of secure those threads in another way to layer <coughs> and then the final touch I did was to add a little torn piece there because I wanted the composition to be more balanced and it looked a bit flat like this so a little something to the other corner so it's just tearing the page opening it up and then as we have little pieces of the pen and paper left we don't need much just a teeny tiny bit if you want to know what is going to be shown then doing it like this adding a couple of pieces of tape then lining everything and pushing down is the way to do it because if you're working on this side you don't know what you are getting and then journaling and the title because if you add your own handwriting to a project naturally it brings some of you to the page and even though you don't love the way your handwriting looks or you may not it's kind of something that is uniquely you so adding the handwritten text saves or if you have alphabet stamps that's another way to kind of not use something that only can be used once because with a pencil or a pen you can just write how many journalings and titles there is whether if you're using alphabet stickers and you're on a budget you can only use those once so there's a couple of tips for a layered fun layout on a budget and if you don't want to journal, if you're blogging and don't want to journal, so it's see, like everybody can see it, there's a number of ways to hiding it. Or just right to the back of the page. So hopefully you like this. And thank you so much for joining today. The recording will be available soon. Mm, if you want to make more out of your supplies, then... Maybe Savvy Supply School is something you could try. I'll add the link later here. And, well, like Sharon said, I kind of noticed that I will be demoing in Frankfurt for Prima. And it's at the end of the month. So if you be are being there, come and say hi. And, well, thank you so much for joining and have a lovely creative 2020. Bye. And thank you, Sharon. Thank you, Natalie. Thank you all for coming. Bye.